My name is Peter Matthias, and uh, as a first, before I will start to talk about the BIM in Czechia, I will tell you something uh, about our company. We are 20 years on the market, so we have a lot of experiences with uh, projects. We have a team of 35 architects and engineers, and we have a seven years experience working with BIM. So we have a, we already done projects which we started in BIM and we work on them in BIM and now they are in operation. So we collected data for facility management. And because we have these experiences, we also developed software BIM point, which is for our clients to use BIM through the life cycle of the building. But I don't want to talk about the software. So history of the BIM in Czechia. We started in 2011 when we, when we established non-government organization which has a name CZBIM. And the biggest aim or why we did it is to put together the companies in Czech Republic, architects, con contractors and the others who want to work with BIM. And we set up the task groups and we start to work on standardization. In 2012, the British started with their strategy. Here on some slide was 2011, so maybe I'm wrong. And in 2013, Mr. Ben Wolbank from Graphisoft, he came to our regular conference and he, he explained us their, uh, their strategy and he mentioned that maybe in year 2013 it's too late for Britain, that it's too late to catch the train, or maybe that is perfect timing, because it's always difficult to be first. It's much better if you can learn from some others who started before you. So we started. And we started with these numbers and we tried to explain to Czech governments and to Czech publics why BIM is necessary for construction business. If you see the inefficiency in construction business is nearly 50 or is 57 percent, which is really high number. And uh, I would like to mention on this conference that in innovations and in BIM, we shouldn't think in small numbers. Because if you consider European market, so if we will, if we will have our uh, efficiency better only about uh, 10 percent points, it means 120 billion euro on the European mar market every year, which is a huge number. In Czech Republic, it's 45 billion Czech krones, and truly I didn't find the Polish numbers. And also we explained to our government that the productivity in construction business is going down. Every year it's lower. And it's because of we built increasingly complex projects. Truly our project, for example, a residential project are in these years maybe the same difficult or the same complex like office building 15 years ago. But we do it the same way. And finally, after three years of the discussions with Czech government, in 2016, we have a BIM in public procurement. So not only private investors, but also the public ones can benefit from, uh, from BIM projects. And really, even after this one year, we have a few major projects in Prague, which, are, which were procured in BIM. And now they are in project phase or in construction, like state opera or project for national audit office or for Charles University. And also this year, on autumn, we in CZ BIM, we published something what we call SNOOM, it's standard of non-graphic model data. It means that now we have uh, parameters for every item 
and we have a first step of the standardization. And we have a par different par sets of parameters for different phases of the project. And all of them, they are mapped to IFC and I think about 80% they are, they are compliant with IFC. And something like one month ago, finally Czech government uh, approved strategy for BIM. So now we have a, a four-year strategy and BIM should be required in Czech Republic from 2021 in all bigger projects. And also we started or they started to use BIM on pilot projects in a state fund of infrastructure. And they are already running, I think, something like eight projects. On this slide, I, I would like to show you the main steps of our standard of our BIM strategy. As a first, from uh, beginning of next, next year, we'll start work the standard, standardization agency, which will be responsible for all BIM standards in Czech Republic. In uh, between the uh, year 17 and 20, we will have a few pilot projects where we will learn how to use BIM and how to benefit from them. From 18, the IFC should be main uh, format for all of the public procurements or public tenders. In uh, year 19, there should be new database for required properties of, of all products, which will be put on the market. And in 20, which is really important thing, we we promise to ourselves that we will start with digitalization of permitting processes. And from 2021, uh, all of the projects over 4 million euro must be in BIM. And then we have uh, some steps after this year as well. And now it's question, if it's not too late to start now. But I believe that even in this year, it's perfect timing. And because we have a lot of experience with BIM projects, we have a few construction company who are already working with BIM and who experienced BIM in a infrastructure project or in the building sectors. During today, you saw these numbers. On a lot of slides, you, show, you saw that uh, BIM can save money. Somewhere was written 33% or 30, 50% in the 50% in the schedule. But I think the biggest issue is how how BIM can save money. And I would say that it's not BIM which will save the money. I think the biggest answer is in digitalization of construction sector. It's not only about the BIM. And here you can see that the construction business is on the end with, the, with digitalization. If you consider the other, other sectors, like hotels, maybe five years ago, uh, if you would ask yourselves or somebody else uh, which are the most important companies in the hotel business, uh, maybe you would receive the answers like Hilton, Marriott and others. But I think today it would be Booking.com, R&B. And you can see that this sector totally changed thanks to the digitalization. It's the same with the bank sector. As a first, uh, they started with the digital signature then you didn't know, uh, need to go to the bank if you needed something to do with your money. Now you can uh, borrow money from other people through certain uh, pages of uh, pages of uh, through certain services. And even now you have a currency which is totally un uh, un independent from the banks or from the states. So also bank sector has really changed dramatically. And I believe with the construction sector, it will be the same. Just we don't know 
most of the innovations yet. What we know from our daily practice is how to work with the projects. We do it quite long time and we know how to deal with the processes during the, during the project phase. Uh, of course, all of the, our clients know that they have to set up some project objective, some program. But we know that on the same levels is to set up the data goals, to discuss from the beginning what they want to receive from the BIM, how they want to use the data, if they need them for facility management or just for the tender. And also the question how the client wants to be involved in the project, if we, if we want to be as a one of the members of the team. It's easy to say that uh, we can communicate online on the project, we, we can do online coordination and etc. But uh, in reality, it's much more complicated because always you have uh, some, BIM pro uh, some BIM data, you have uh, some model, but also you still have a lot of documents lot of 2D data, a lot of reports and technical sheets and others. So you always will need some common data environment. What we do when we work on the project and how we work with our clients is that we, we can show them different views on BIM project. We can show them a 3D model, uh, we can show them drawings, spreadsheets, and we are able to, to view the project in the virtual reality. You saw, you saw some pictures and we do that for, I don't know, last one year. And I may say that it, in the process of designing, it's very nice. It's not on, only for the marketing issues, but mainly it's for the work with the client. It's really transparency in the design. So your client, he can see the design really in the details, where is the documentation. And let's look to the other process which is connected with virtual reality and with the model. We say that uh, we are able to do design phase really fast. Of course, we can do construction phase really fast and you heard talking uh, guy from Hochtief and from the other companies and we can uh, think about the processes, we can digitalize them. But what's the problem in Czechia? Definitely, I don't know in Poland, but I think it will be nearly the same. It's public approvals. If we work on a project, so we work totally one year on a project, but the public approval will take five to 10 years. Then construction will take another one and a half. So the question is why to be effective in our phases, in design phase and in construction phase, if the public approval will stay so long. Czech Republic is somewhere behind the Afghanistan with the... to compare how many months we need to receive the building permit. So it's not about to, to short it for 10 persons, but it's about, about it to short it uh, something like 10 times. So what we can do, we can, for example, to use BIM model for the public approvals, because we know that in BIM model, in early stage, there is a much more information than we used to have in uh, 2D drawings. And we could use virtual reality for public approvals. Because one of the issue is to show to the public how project looks, what's the connection to the neighborhood, uh, how will be transportation and traffic around, and etc. And we can do it in virtual reality. Of course that you can do it with the glasses, but we have that experience that it, if we will give glasses to our client, that it's like to send him to Disney World. He never comments anything. And what's other issue in uh, when we work on BIM project is that uh, it's necessary to have new new forms of as-built documentation, because until these days 
it was some kind of documentation which wasn't really important. The client, he received some set of the drawings, some sets of the papers, uh, reports, uh, technical sheets and others. But in BIM world, they need to use this database, this BIM database for facility management. And we know from our projects that it's quite difficult to collect all of these data during the construction and to be able to give it to the client in some database and to let him use it in future. And what kind of the data we have to collect during the during the period of the construction. Of course, when you start construction, you have just some project data, some geometry, some parameters. Then you have a lot of construction data, dates, cost, product dates. Then there are there are some reports from the quality control. Then there is a lot of communication around the project, around the construction. And then there is a lot of information when he need, which he needs for operation. It means data about the installed items, technical sheets and others. And this is something what we are now doing in Czech Republic on some project that we are really collecting this data for the client. Because true is that if you will have BIM in public tenders, so what the investor will require? In our country, usually they doesn't care if contractor will use BIM during the construction because it's not really important for them. For them, it's important to get project in BIM because they can see it, for example, in virtual reality or in BIM model, and they can be sure that they are receiving what they want. And they need to receive database for facility management because that's something what's important for the client. So I think the first step in our country, it's like that, is that they will require SBL documentation in BIM format because they want to, to benefit from the BIM, BIM during the life cycle of the building and they want to, to have part of this or they want to save from this cost which is 73 or somebody somebody says 80 persons from the total cost of the building and on the end what i would like to say is that for me bim is just the beginning of the digitalization it's not something what should be goal or our goal that we will have a project in bim but we should think about the processes and how we will digitalize, digitalize them. And that's everything from me. Thank you. Bye.